Welcome. You hear it again and again. Global warming is BS. Well, this video is going to cut through all the denial and propaganda, misinterpretations, hearsay, lies and rumors, and look at the evidence, the scientific evidence for global warming. We are all familiar with how thermometers work. So let's take this simple instrument and see what they have to say about the issue. All measurements indicate global temperatures are rising. That's from different research groups, different instrumentation, different analysis techniques, and it's taken at different times and in different places. And they all get the same result. That's a very powerful thing in science when you get lots of independent confirmation of a result. So let's take a look at those results. Here is the plot from six such groups that are measuring global temperatures over different time frames. Some of them go back as far as 1850. Now the data from back then is not quite so certain. So the uncertainty on that is about 0.25 degrees centigrade. You can see the range of the peaks and valleys at that time. However, when you get into the modern era, say after 1950 or so, the data gets much, much better. And the probable uncertainty on that is less than 0.1 degrees centigrade. And you can measure the rate of increase since, say, 1975 to be 0.19 degrees centigrade per decade. Now, we've been dealing with surface temperatures at the moment. Now, what about upper atmosphere? Now, this is measured by satellites and a completely different method from how the surface measurements are measured. So you can see in this data, there is a strong upward trend over the last 53 years. It amounts to about 0.14 degrees centigrade per decade, less than the lower atmosphere, which would be expected because this is being measured at approximately four kilometers altitude, where it's much colder and much more divorced from interaction between the land and ocean. But nonetheless, it's quite a significant rate of increase. What about ocean surface temperatures? Here is a plot of the ocean surface temperatures compared to a baseline of 1971 to 2000. Now remember, that's when global warming was increasing the most rapidly. So this has a, a strong global warming component in already. If we went to an earlier time, all these temperatures would be much higher. But you can see here, there's a tremendous amount of warming going on in the North Atlantic off the European coast. You can see the warm area just off the west coast of South America. That's the beginnings of the El Nino that we're currently experiencing. And there are other large areas of warm ocean all around the globe. There are a few areas where it is cooled, but not many. If you look at it graphically, you can see the same picture. In 2023, the ocean surface temperature on average is way above the mean and also any previous years. We have something like about 0.25 degrees centigrade warming above the previous record highs. That's a tremendous amount of heating. It is not just the surface that's heating, but the depths of the oceans are heating as well, which is probably at least as concerning. One thing we have to mention here is the units used. These are zeta joules, ZJ. And a zeta joule is 10,000 times the energy of the largest nuclear weapon ever exploded and a thousand times the largest volcanic eruption ever measured. And you can see here on the right are the profile as a function of time for different depths of the ocean. The top one, A, is the ocean as a whole, and that's increased by something like 300 zeta joules. Then you have the top 700 meters, which is the one that mostly concerns us. That's gone up by uh, 200 zeta joules. The middle part of the ocean has gone up by about 80 zeta joules. And the deepest ocean has increased a little by about 20 zeta joules. So this is a lot of energy that's been going into the ocean. And the only source of that energy is the sun. So sun heat is being absorbed by the oceans and is being transmitted deeper and deeper into the oceans. So we could draw some conclusions from what the thermometers are telling us. The land, ocean, surface, ocean depth, and upper atmosphere all have warmed quite significantly. This is confirmed by multiple independent sources, which means it's a very powerful and probably correct result. The oceans have absorbed most of this extra energy. It's the equivalent, amazingly, of four Hiroshima atomic bombs every second since 1950. 
There is another way of checking whether the temperatures are increasing or not, and that's to look at the distribution of temperatures. If the globe is warmed in general, the bell curve of temperatures across the globe will move to the right in this figure, and you'll get more high temperature records than low. Similarly, if the planet is cooled, the bell curve will move to the left, and you'll get more low temperature records than high. So let's see which is true. Here are the figures as published by NOAA for the last year. Daily temperature records are broken up into day highs, night highs, day lows, and night lows. And similarly for monthly and all time records. But if you take ratios of high temperatures to low temperatures here, you get the following. Each one of these ratios is positive, which means there's more high temperature records being set than low, which indicates that in fact the globe is warming. So this is quite a significant change in the uh, temperature record in the last year. And this has been reflected again and again over the last 20 or 30 years. Is that not enough for you? Well, is there any more evidence? Well, there's lots. If the oceans are heating up, the water expands as it warms. So sea level should be rising. And in fact, it is. This is a plot of sea level. The first part of the graph is measured using tide gauge, which is a little bit more unreliable. But the last 50 years or so has been using satellite altimetry. And that's uh, very, very reliable because it doesn't depend on what the land is doing. And the interesting thing here is that the rise in ocean temperature is accelerating. It is not a straight line. The, li the line is getting steeper and steeper as time goes by. But unfortunately, the thermal expansion of the ocean, from given those temperatures that we've seen, is not enough to explain this rise in sea level. There's something else going on. So what else could be explaining sea level rise? Well, first thing is the melting of the ice caps. There's two ice caps, one on Greenland and one on uh, the Antarctic. And the GRACE mission, which is a gravity mission, is measuring the mass of those ice caps, and that is falling rapidly. Something like 250 cubic kilometers of ice lost every year. Then we also have land-based ice in the terms of mountain glaciers. Glaciers are retreating globally. Some glaciers are thinning, i.e. they're melting. They're not moving very much, but they're just getting thinner and thinner. So there's less and less ice in them. And then some glaciers, the flow rate is increasing. And so there's more ice being put into the oceans. Now, one thing there's a great deal of confusion about is the loss of sea ice. A lot of people argue, oh, well, sea ice is going away. That's explaining the rise in sea level. But of course, it doesn't. You've often seen the experiment where you put uh, ice into a full glass of water like this. You watch it melt and the glass does not overflow. That's because uh, ice places its own weight in water. So when it melts, the level of the water stays the same. In a similar way, when the sea ice melts, it doesn't change the level of the ocean at all. When ice is thrown into the oceans from the calving of glaciers, then that does in fact increase sea levels. However, the loss of sea ice is an indicator of global warming. And if you look at global sea ice here over the last 50 or so years, you can see that there's been a distinct drop of sea ice. And the last few months, that's been quite spectacular. So we can draw some more conclusions here. Sea level is rising at about four millimeters per year. That rate is accelerating. The acceleration is due to melting of ice caps and land-based glaciers, not the loss of sea ice, but this loss of sea ice does indicate that the globe is warming. So that's another measure of the fact that the globe is warming. Are there any other indications that the globe is warming? Well, the habits of animals, which is independent of thermometers or anything else, is it indicating that there is. For example, are there earlier blooming times? Blooming times have come at least a week earlier than they were 100 years ago. Planting zones are moving forward. I can grow things in my garden that 20 years ago I couldn't. For example, figs. We have tropical diseases moving into temperate zones. In the area that I live now, we have had some examples of West Nile virus for the first time for some of our neighbors caused by mosquito bites. And the migration of certain birds is changing. For example, when I came here in the 
1979-80 time frame, the Canadian geese that uh, were here during the summer left in October or so and didn't come back until March or April. Now many of them overwinter here. There's been, there's been major changes in farming techniques. In the UK, there are now 900 vineyards registered. Back in 1086, when they wrote the Doomsday Book, there are only 39. And that was at the peak of the medieval warm period. There's longer and more intense fire seasons now. When I lived in California, the fire season didn't start until the late autumn. It's now basically all year round. Logging is affected by pine beetles. If you drive through the mountains of Colorado uh, and the West, you see large areas of dead brown uh, pine trees caused by pine beetles, which normally would be killed off by the winters, but the winters are too mild now, and most of the pine beetles survive to come and do more damage to the pine trees. Humidity is an interesting factor. Humidity depends solely on the ambient temperature. If you increase the temperature, the air can hold more moisture. If you decrease the temperature, it can hold less. There has been a global increase in specific humidity, and therefore temperatures must have risen. Here is the humidity plot. You can see there's a distinct uh, increase over the last 50 years. You can say there's no evidence for global warming if and only if you disregard all the following things. All surface temperature readings over the last 170 years have increased. Satellite measurements of the upper atmosphere over the last 44 years have increased. Sea surface temperature measurements over the last 170 years have increased. There's been heating in the deep oceans. There are more high temperature records set than cold, which indicates that the climate is warming. Sea level rise is accelerating. Loss of ice from some of the ice caps. Glacial retreat, thinning and flow rates have all increased. The loss of sea ice. Flowering times are getting earlier. Planting zones are moving poleward. Tropical diseases are moving north. Change in bird migratory patterns and timing. Change in crop plantings. Longer fire seasons. More pests surviving through the winter. Humidity levels increasing. Plus, Lots, lot more, which I don't have time to go into at the moment. Now for the much more complicated issue of attribution. What's causing this? To err is human, to blame someone else is politics. But however, I'm going to try to do this purely from a scientific point of view. So next time, attributions. So thank you for watching. Uh, stay safe until next time. Goodbye.